Good evening, builders. Krosama here. So, I finally completed the RG New. It's, from start to finish, amazing. I loved every single second I was building this kit. Even the fin funnels. As repetitive as they were, because you are going to get six of them, you know what? I still actually had a blast. Uh, I was pretty much watching Pulp Fiction at the end of that, so uh, I was really just like putting on some background uh, movie music, and I just, I loved everything, man. Even on the streams, I just... I think I always had a smile on my face whenever I was building this kit, so I'm hoping that's really good news for some of you to hear because no one really wants to build a kit that's either going to be super complex or it's just going to be uh, repetitive or it's just really not going to be an exciting build whatsoever. This kit, although it's not, I would say it's not really breaking the mold per se, we've seen certain aspects of this kit in other different forms of real grades or even master grades. But the thing is, a lot of the best things from all different uh, grades, whether it's, whether it's high grades, real grades, or master grades, maybe even a little bit of perfect grade, it's all in this one kit. So you're getting just everything. You're getting amazing articulation, posability, gimmicks, armor separation, color separation. This kit is going to have it all, and I cannot wait to show it all to you in this review. But the first thing I want to go ahead and do is... Do a little bit of panel lining and then throw those little uh, stickers on there so that way you can see just with a little bit of tiny work, just basically panel lining, what this kit's going to look like. So when it comes to panel lining, honestly, there's a lot of different options you're going to have. Now, the option I prefer to go to is going to be the Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color. This is pretty much my go-to for any of them. Uh, now, the one thing that a lot of people want to warn you about is this may crack the plastic or make it brittle. It's really going to depend on the plastic, in my opinion, uh, because I've been using this for about two years, and I haven't had any issues yet. Now, I would say just go ahead and throw a, uh, a clear coat over the plastic and then put it on there because it's going to let the flow of the uh, ink actually go a little more smooth. But that's up to you how you're going to want to do it. Uh, maybe experiment a little bit here and there. But for the most part, this has been my go-to for panel lining. Now, I also do have this mechanical pencil. So this is actually pretty cool. It is going to have an eraser at the tip. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much a mechanical pencil. <laughs> I would honestly just get a regular mechanical pencil. Uh, but I bought this just to go ahead and test it out. And it actually does work wonders. I've mostly used these with uh, painted white kits. Uh, because it's a little bit easier to kind of maneuver on a white kit than what it was for any other colors. Uh, but yeah, for like actual regular plastic, I definitely would not go ahead and use this approach. And next you're going to have is the Gundam markers. So this one is just going to have a wider brush. Uh, overall, it's not a bad you know tool whatsoever. Uh, I used to use this when I was a little bit younger, but for the most part, I just kind of switched over to uh, the Tamiya's. And next you're going to have is another Gundam marker, uh, but this one is going to have a fine tip. So it, this is going to be probably one of your better options when it comes to uh, just panel lining bare plastic and not like a painted kit. Honestly, these are really good just for straight builds. But if you're not going to straight build, then I'm pretty sure you have better options already since you are uh, already painting. But hey, this is a really good option for beginners. And this, this is something I will be utilizing a little bit in future builds. Uh, just that way you can see exactly you know what kind of uh, panel lining op options you have and what the result's going to be. But we're going to go ahead and just use the Tamiya uh, panel line accent color. Now what I use to get rid of the excess paint is just a Q-tip and some Zippo lighter fluid. So just dab a little bit on here and lightly just kind of rub it on there. And as you can see, get rid of all the excess. And then you can just get like a little napkin and then just wipe it all down. So with the panel lining done and all the stickers put on, this is going to be your final product. Now if you want to take the extra step and maybe put some top coat on there or even paint it, then you're definitely going to have to go that route, but uh, that's something I can definitely teach you on a later basis. But for right now, I kind of want to just show you what it's going to look like in this kind of you know state. And don't forget to check out the online shop, newtypehq.com, and then use that promo code CROSAMA so that way you can get 10% off all your purchases. So on to the review. Now we take a look at the details. Man, oh man, look at that face. 
This is just a beautiful, beautiful head sculpt. Everything from the vents, which is all open. These are all open parts. Uh, well, except for these like two little front ones right here on the side of the face. You got to go ahead and paint that in. As well as this front mask. That is going to uh, require a little bit of panel lining because it's not going to have uh, the open vents like it used to in like, a lot of the old uh, real grades. So you're definitely going to have to bust out them panel liners and just etch in a little bit of those details. Now the eyes as well as the front camera and the back camera over here is all going to be uh, stickers. So if you really want to just bright it up, I mean you could definitely use paint, use some chrome and then some clear green. Uh, but I just went ahead and left these stickers because I, I, I think they look pretty good for what they are. Moving right along to the body, the hidden secret behind this is going to be in the articulation, uh, which I will show you in the articulation segment. But man, oh man, I love this. And you're gonna have a green sticker right there, which looks very bright and shiny. Now the backpack is looking really good as well. These thrusters are pretty damn cool and I definitely want to paint these a little bit later on. Uh, but the one thing that kind of sucks is that you're going to have to do a little bit of modding so that way you can put some of the, uh, the actual thruster effect parts right in there and just kind of give it that extra look and effect. Now if you want the twin funnel effect, you are going to get one extra little piece right here so you can plug this in instead of the uh, beam saber and you can have your twin funnel. Uh, but obviously I don't have a second set of funnels yet so it's just going to be the one for right now. And the waist is looking really good as well. It's going to have a little functionality right here in the front skirts which I will show off a little bit later. But for the most part, yeah, everything on the skirt itself is going to look pretty damn good with all these marking stickers. And what's coming down to the legs, the overall just stunning thing about these are going to be the movement and that's something I can't wait to show you as well. But all these like etched in details and everything, it's just you're really going to have a good time panel lining or just, you know, if you don't want to panel line, cool, but if you want to maybe uh, do some masking and then kind of color all this a different gray part. So you are going to see right here, you're going to have two different like shades of colors. So you're going to have like the white and you're also going to have like all the gray right here. So that's just going to give you better color separation overall. And then the feet are going to look pretty damn good as well. Now for the details on the arms, I'm absolutely loving these shoulders. I think they look absolutely beautiful now with the rest of the arm i mean once again these are just going to be very beautiful arms uh they are going to be asymmetric so i don't know if that's going to bother you or not but it does not for me because hey that's the new gundam uh that's how it be though but uh yeah you're gonna get some of these little like oh kind of like chrome stickers right there on the elbows as well as the knees and the ankles uh but yeah these arms are looking really damn good so Man, I, I don't know, there's not much I can say in terms of detail that's like a negative. I really haven't found anything, but uh, maybe it's to some people there are some things on the uh, the real grade kit that's just not going to be uh, as pleasant to the eye as it is to me. Now rolling right along into the articulation, there is going to be a lot to cover. So with the head, it is going to be on a ball joint. Now the base of the neck right there is going to be on a ball joint, but what is actually fantastic is going to be inside here. This neck base can actually move up, so if you're trying to like have a dashing pose, you're definitely going to be able to accomplish that. Now for the body, the cockpit does come up like so, and also the entire front of the cockpit can also come out like so. Now here's where it gets really bizarre, so this is... By far the greatest ab crunch I've ever seen on a real grade and pretty much like any high grade to be honest as well as most master grades I've ever seen in my entire life. That is just outrageous. Um, so the movement on this man it is I can't even I don't know. I am at a loss for words. That is some super robot stuff and I'm going to definitely showcase a lot of that at the end of this video with some nice little poses. This little funnel piece can move all the way around. Beam saber holster can move up and down. These shoulders can move out and it's going to be a part of a transformation that I will show you near the end. But the rest of the shoulder can move up and can just rotate. Now right inside the shoulder you are going to be able to pretty much pull this out and it's going to be able to bend quite forward. And in fact you are going to be able to just pull out that entire mechanism pretty much all the way out. The arm can move pretty much all the way up. Can move backwards about that far. Swivel at the bicep. Two points of articulation at the elbow, so you're gonna have one up here and one right here inside the forearm. So this first one's gonna go about that far, and then the rest that far. Wrist is on a ball joint, but this forearm part can also move up and down. 
Front skirts can move up and pretty much all around. Side skirts can move up and can rotate. Back skirts can only move out that far. Now for these hips, there is a mechanism that is going to allow you to expand it. And it's, a, it's not complicated, but it's a lot more effort than what I thought. Uh, so you can just le like let this little lever down and then you're gonna move these hips. I'm just gonna kind of move this first one down. So as you can see, it rotates down and then you can go ahead and pull this back piece out. And there we go, just had to pull it down a little bit, a little, little tight, but hey, came down. And then you're gonna pull this little piece out like so. Push this piece right back in. Take the front crotch piece and pull it forward. Then this entire hip piece is going to basically dislocate. You're then gonna push this piece back in, push this piece back in, and push the hip back in. So now you're gonna have way more of a hip movement but, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit harder to conceal everything. I mean, you, you definitely can, but it's gonna be kinda obvious that this you know hip joint has really been extended. Now at least can move out pretty goddamn far. Move forward that much. Move forward about that much. Backwards that far. Rotation at the hip joint. You're gonna have a couple points of articulation and lots of separation. So I'm gonna do this multiple times so that way you can see. But yeah, there's going to be some armor shifting right up here at the thigh. So just do this and you're gonna have some little pistons right there. So bam, you're gonna have some armor shifting. Now you come over here and with this part, if you move this, then you start seeing more separation right here and then this is going to extend now if you move this foot back you're also going to see some more armor separation right there from the shin and that is going to man that all this i'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you in one full swoop so let's go ahead and reset it and i'm about to uh we're about to be busting loads my boys so we're going to take this i'm gonna get myself situated rotate this bam all right let's get let's get this part oh my god and then right there look at all that armor shifting and the foot can move side to side back and forth front toe part can move up and down and this thruster can only move a little bit now believe me when i say this is by far the most ambitious articulation i've ever seen on a real grade Nothing. There's no other real grade that is coming close to the levels of the real grade new. This has set a new standard. This this is just like elevating my overall respect for the real grade line. Like I absolutely I, I am blown, blown away, my boys, by how fantastic and how just bizarre this looks. Now first starting off with the real grade news weapon. I think it looks pretty goddamn good. It, I mean, you're gonna have all this gray underneath here. That's all just color separation. That's that's the inner frame of this part. So, yeah, I mean, there's really not much work you need to put into this. Uh, maybe just the top of here, if you wanna paint like that silver or something like that, or even paint these little vents silver, that would definitely work out pretty damn good. Uh, but yeah, this, I mean, there's not really much else of in terms of work that you need to do from a straight builder's point of view. It's it's more or less if you just want to be a little more ambitious, definitely go for it. But yeah, this is, this is a pretty damn good weapon. Now, if you flip out this little tab right here and you slide down this back tab to the skirt, you can plug the rifle directly onto the back. Now I also want to mention the backpack adapter. This is going to go right here on the underside and then you're just going to connect both of them like so. Now you will need one of the new Act 5 stands. These are going to be the more compatible stands that's going to be for this or you can use an Act 2 stand. Now for the bazooka, the bazooka looks really damn good. You are going to have the red right there for the missiles and it can extend. The actual handle can move down and if you want to store it, you can definitely just flip this little tab up and plug it right here in the middle of the backpack. Now for the beam saver on the back, all you can do is pull it out, fold out this little tab, 
And with this particular beam saber, you are gonna have two beam effect parts, one for the bottom and one for the top. Now aside from the beam saber right up here, you're also going to have one stored right here in the arm. So you basically just pull this out and you can pull the beam saber out. Fits snug in the same hand. And you also get two beam saber effect parts. And next we're going to have is going to be this beautiful shield. So a lot of gray just etched in all inside there. And then on the other side, you're going to have tons of details you can go ahead and just paint up. And you're going to have some of these little missiles right there. Man, this is looking super damn beautiful. Uh, basically, the new shield is one of my favorite kind of like more default shields. One, ones that don't have like a lot of functionality to it. Uh, but this is definitely a sturdy, beautiful looking shield with some amazing markings. And you attach it to the forearm like so. Now it's also going to have some nice mobility so it can move back and forth and can rotate all the way around. And the last weaponry to cover is going to be the new funnels. So man, oh man, these are significantly better than the new Verka. Um, I, although I do love the new Verka for what it is, met these, look how sturdy these things are. Um, now they are going to have that pre-made inner frame right inside here. So when handling handling it, uh, just make sure you are holding it by both bases and you kind of like bend it at an arc uh, so that way you're not like, you know, trying to damage any of these parts right here. Now the way you do connect them is you're going to flip this part down right here as well as uh, flip this little part up. You're also going to flip this part outwards like so. And you can snap it like this. Or you can snap it like that. And here they all are connected. So they are fairly tight, uh, but if you kind of like, you know, obviously vigorously shake them, uh, then they can pop off and become loose. But I will say that this is a much better connection point and it's a lot more sturdy than the uh, new Verka. And you connect it on the back of the backpack like so. Now for the most part, it is not difficult to get this kit to stand up straight. Uh, now it is going to have its kind of like leaning moment, moments as you can see right now. So you are going to have to balance it as best as you can, but it's only moving like this because it's on a turntable. Uh, but hey, otherwise it's going to be able to stand up. It's not really going to have any issues. Even when it's moving back and forth, hey, the stability is still there. So just kind of like, you know, work it and just really get those feet planted as best as you can. And you can get a really cool just standing pose by itself. Now before we move on to the rest of the fin funnel gimmicks, I do want to show you one gimmick this thing is going to have and it's obviously alluding to the P Bandai heavy weapon system. So what you can do is you can pull these little parts out, bring these side parts down, take these shoulders and you're going to move these out, bring this part of the shoulder up, slide these front skirts down, and lastly slide these little leg parts down. Now for this gimmick, I do believe it could just be an uh, open hatch gimmick, but they don't say anything in the manual. See right here in the manual, it doesn't state that it's like any kind of open hatch gimmick or it's for anything else, but I'm pretty sure it is for the heavy weapon system. Now if you want to make these funnels fly with style, you're going to have to use these effect parts. You're going to need the figureize effect jet effect clear blue as well as the clear yellow parts. Now these do not come with the stand, but these are really cool effect parts and you're going to get three in each. Uh, the blue is definitely going to be more for the thrusters, whereas the yellow is going to be for the fin funnels. And all you're going to do is just plug it right in. Now with everything attached, you have all the weapons, you have all the effect parts, and you have the stand. This kit right here, my boys, is going to be a spectacle on top of your shelf, guaranteed. There's no other kit that I can I can really think of that's in an affordable price range. You know, obviously something like the Neo Zeong is really going to be an eye catcher, but this for roughly between $45 to $50, and if you you know throw in all the effect parts and stand, you're probably going to be spending uh, no more than about $70 to $75 you're gonna have this beautiful display piece on your shelf and I love it. Like this, 
this is permanent this is like this is how I'm gonna be displaying my kit I, I have to and then with the oh my god with the twin uh, funnel set Jesus I mean I don't even know if I can like have that many funnels just flying all around but it will look pretty cool but there's something missing the RG Sazabi, of course. So these two have to go together. If you do pick up the RG new but don't have the Sazabi, maybe just put a couple of pennies away here and there, and then eventually go ahead and pick up that RG Sazabi. It's going to look beautiful next to its arch rival. Now for comparisons, here he is next to the RG Crossbone and the Master Grade new Verka. Now between the real grade and the master grade, there are just tons of differences in terms of small little details or even the cycle frame. The cycle frame is not a canon item except for in the cockpit of the new Gundam. Uh, whereas for the Verka, I mean, it's kind of just riddled all over the armor, but uh, that's just something that is only with the Verka. Uh, now with the RG, it's its own standalone, kind of more of a real type, you know, hence real grade, of the anime version. Whereas the Verka is kind of just a, a twisted take on the new. So they both are going to have very different aesthetics, very different, uh, just kind of like, you know, parts all over it. It's, it's going to be different. So if you had to like choose which one you really wanted, I think what it boils down to is two things. One, size, and two, posability. And I'll just I'll throw in pricing as well. The new Verka is definitely going to be on the uh, pricier end, but I think um, if you get everything that I mentioned earlier, you're going to be getting the real grade new about the same price. Now, when it comes to scaling, do you like your kids bigger? Do you like your kids smaller? And for posability, 100% the real grade is going to knock it out of the park and that like I've ever seen in terms of posability in comparison with the uh, MG Verka. Now, what are my final thoughts on this kit? Well, honestly, <laughs> this definitely became more than likely my favorite model kit to date. Uh, I, and I've said this with the Sazabi at one point, but man, this kit is so much fun to play with. Uh, I absolutely just love the posability. I love the gimmicks. I love the fin funnel effects. Man, this is just this is so much better than when I handled the uh, the Master Grade so many years ago. I think back in like 2012 or late 2011. Uh, but this kit just has it all for me, man. It has the aesthetics, it has the detail, it has the posability. The price range is really good. I actually picked this up for 3,300 yen, and I yeah, I did not realize how cheap that was. Um, but for the most part, this this kit is an absolute must buy. Like. I, I wish I can be at every per, uh, person's like, you know, phone app and I, and I just force you to buy this kit and, and I would pay the difference. I don't care. This kit needs to be in your collection 100%. And if you say I don't like the aesthetics of the new Gundam, I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. That's your lost cause. But hey, for all the other guys, hey, definitely go ahead and try and get this kit if you can. Well, that's it for me, guys. So... I'm tired. It's about like 2 a.m. in the morning. I still have to edit this video and get this thing up because I am going on vacation. So, yeah, I need a little bit of a break. I need I need some sleep. I feel like I've been uh, burning the midnight oil like nonstop for the past like two weeks. So I'm going to take a little minor break and I'll kind of recharge my batteries, come back and start pushing out more content. Uh, but when it comes to new like kits, I'm not buying any new kits until the... Master Grade uh, Zaku Warrior. That's gonna be the next one I'm buying. Everything in between now until then, I'm not. I'm not touching. I I have other projects I really want to work on, and I want to get some build, uh, some painted build kits out there to review and to show you guys. But hey, that's it for me. So appreciate all of you for watching. If you can like this video, rate, comment, subscribe. I know I always say rate because back in the day it used to be rate, but um, hey, like the video, subscribe if you really like this content. And you want to see more and leave a comment just let me know what you think of this kit and if you're gonna pick it up or not but hey that's it for me see you guys later bye bye